Welcome. I am Carl Svedberg from the University of Gothenburg. This is EHJ Today. I'm here at the EEC meeting in Barcelona and with me is uh, Professor Piotr Ponikowski from Wroclaw, po Poland and Professor Harry Kreins from Maastricht, uh, the Netherlands. We are going to discuss an interesting study that uh, uh, Piotr Ponikowski presented today. Potter, uh, this confirmed trial, why did you do this? Well, we did it mainly because uh, we realized some years ago that iron deficiency is a very common comorbidity complicating the natural cause of chronic heart failure, but not necessarily chronic. We also see this uh, now in patients with acute heart failure. So in other words, across the whole spectrum of heart failure, iron deficiency is common, uh, related to a very poor outcome. And uh, although we intuitively are linking iron deficiency with anemia, we now know that these deleterious consequences of iron deficiency are completely independent of uh, hemoglobin level. So it forms the good background to believe that iron deficiency itself may become an attractive therapeutic target in heart failure. Uh, it has been tested in several clinical trials, few clinical trials. FAIR HF, we presented some years ago was uh, the biggest one, but we definitely needed to confirm the favorable results. We still didn't know about the long-term sustainability of the favorable results. Uh, the safety data are obviously needed, and uh, most importantly, the data on the outcomes. And uh, trying to address these questions, we designed an executive confirm HF, which I presented today. Yeah. The, the was an interesting observations you did in the FAIR trial, which surprised many, including me, that iron deficiency itself was important. Now, what did you find in the confirmed trial? In this trial, we recruited 304 stable ambulatory heart failure patients in NIHA class 2 and 3 with a reduced, these patients had heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, so ejection fraction below 45% or had iron deficiency confirmed on the basis of a low ferritin and transferrin saturation. And uh, iron therapy was given for 12 months. Uh, the primary endpoint was a change in the six minute walking test distance by week 24. But we also investigated, evaluated all the indices of functional capacity and quality of life and the outcome, as I said, throughout the whole study. Uh, in brief, the major result was ferric carboximaltose given to iron deficiency patients significantly improved exercise tolerance as uh, evidenced by the really a uh, huge improvement in six minute walking test at the end of 24 weeks by 33 meters which is uh, the result we only observed in the trials with cardiac resynchronization therapy the effect was sustainable until the end of the trial. There was also positive, statistically significant improvement in functional capacity as evaluated by patient global assessment, NEHA class, uh, fatigue score, and uh, interestingly also quality of life improved throughout the whole study. So interesting findings, but obviously uh, everybody would address the question about the outcomes. We evaluated prospectively the outcomes of the secondary endpoints. Obviously, the trial was not designed for mortality and morbidity. It was a, a secondary endpoint. Uh, we did not find any difference in mortality, but we only had few deaths, 12 versus 14, 12 in the active group, 14 in placebo. But we observed a really important uh, favorable reduction in the risk of heart failure hospitalization with hazard ratio of 0.31. So huge, and if we uh, combine and we uh, once we analyze the uh, heart failure rehospitalization total hazard ratio was 0.3, which is highly significant. So to make long story short, uh, the treatment, uh, the active treatment with ferric carboximaltose in this patient significantly also not only improved functional capacity, exercise tolerance, and quality of life, but also reduced significantly uh, the risk of heart failure hospitalization. As um, you alluded to, that um, the six-minute walk test and quality of life may be difficult to measure or assess if uh, 
it's not a fully blinded study. How did you assess blinding as this is not a colorless substance? Well, actually, this is extremely important issue, Carl, as you know well. Uh, Ferric carboxy maltose as such has a brownish color. So we were in a positive way obsessed with this uh, to maintain the blind character of the trial. We made sure that, that we have a blinded and unblinded personnel and additionally we applied curtains, black syringes, really to keep both the personnel and the patient blinded. Yeah, I think that's an important aspect uh, in this. Harry, you were the discussant in this uh, hotline presentation. What did you uh, bring up? I brought up that that confirm confirms, in fact, what Fair already showed. But now, up to one year, so the effects of uh, intravenous iron appear sustained up till one year for uh, patient reported outcomes, but also the primary endpoint and confirm the six-minute uh, walk test and the other point to take from the study now is that cardiovascular hospitalizations were significantly reduced as uh, Piotr already uh, indicated. So I think it's um, not already time to include intravenous um, iron therapy in iron deficient heart failure patients as a class 1 recommendation. On the other hand, I think intravenous iron may be considered in patients with iron deficient uh, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction if all other measures have been installed and the patient remains uh, seriously uh, symptomatic. Then a check of iron status and then followed by uh, intravenous uh, iron therapy might be beneficial for patients. I think this is an important step in the reminder for cardiologists to assess iron status because that's uh, not uh, done uh, every time uh, according to my experience. So that, that, that uh, sounds like a 2B uh, recommendation in the uh, guideline type of approach. Um, Piotr, what's your, uh, what do you think are the clinical implications of your findings in these two studies? Well, I think we have now two studies, so I would be uh, less reluctant to say not to be but to A, but this is a semantic discussion. The take home message from my perspective is first of all, if we have heart failure patient, we should rather consider to s actively seek for iron deficiency, as you said. We have a good and simple, uh, accessible, biomarkers to do it. And once, as Henry already alluded to, once we identify those with iron deficiency, which is perhaps uh, half of our population, we need to consider IV iron as an effective treatment to replete iron and at least improve quality of life, functional capacity, and hopefully also longer term outcome. But for this, uh, we obviously need mortality and morbidity uh, trial and I r am really looking forward to, to initiate such trial and, uh, and I hope that we can do it in the, in the next future. Har Harry pointed out that in his uh, discussion that uh, there were very few patients from the West European centers but many from the Russian and Polish center. Uh, have you any explanation for that? Actually, not from Polish centers, but from the Ukrainian centers. So Russian, Ukraine, and Poland contributed mostly, indeed. But uh, perhaps uh, all clinical trials now in heart failure, you know better because you have uh, much longer experience with this, uh, are suffering in the Western countries. Uh, the recruitment now is uh, much faster and much more efficient in the, in the Eastern countries. I, I take this uh, argument that... Uh, that um, uh, these patients were recruited, uh, many of these patients in, in the Eastern countries, but still. So what's next? I believe that, uh, I hope that we need to, as uh, you both uh, alluded to and uh, mentioned, consider this uh, as a part of the guidelines. We may debate which kind uh, for functional capacity, which, which, which kind of recommendation. But obviously the next step I would envisage is uh, mortality and morbidity study. And I hope that you 
as a trialist with uh, such a reputation, agree with me that to, to have conf really confirmation, we, yeah, we that need that sort be, of That would be important. But now we have what we have. So what's the uh, take home message for our audience now? Seek actively for iron deficiency in heart failure patients. And uh, if you detect it, and as Harris said, if the patient is optimally treated, consider IV iron with ferric carboxymaltose as an additional part of the therapy. So what do you say, Harry? What's your recommendation? My recommendation would, in addition to that, be also have an open eye for subgroups which could have most of the benefit, like patients with diabetes or renal dysfunction, because those are concomitant chronic conditions where iron deficiency may play an important role, and obviously therapy might, uh, well, the effect might multiply even. Okay, yeah, I think we have a new and interesting option for some patients with uh, chronic heart failure. So thank you for bringing this uh, results to us.